With this video, I want to showcase two things. One, why demand for Threadripper is still really high, even if you don't believe that. And two, why do systems like this exist? What's your minimum specification? So sitting alongside me here today is the Armari 64TP for Threadripper Pro. And I'm going to use it here and show a few benchmarks later as an example of why what I'm talking about today is so important. So let's answer that second question first. Why do systems like this exist? This is a 2U form factor housing the ASUS WRX 80E Sage motherboard, a 64-core Threadripper Pro 3995WX, a Gigabyte RTX 3090, and lots of cooling and memory and fans and uh, extra PCIe storage at the bottom. This system exists in this form factor rather than a standard tower form factor because of where it's going. Now, mention the pandemic and mention work from home, and I'm pretty sure everybody knows what we're talking about. When you are a Threadripper or a Threadripper Pro user in the office and you move from the office to the home, in the office, you may have had your workstation on your desk, beside your feet. Basically, you have all that power right at your fingertips. When you suddenly go home, do you have the space for that system? Do you have the space for your monitors? Do you have the capability to deal with the power or the thermals? Because not everybody has the ability to accommodate those, companies that use workstations and Threadripper and Threadripper Pro-like systems have had to migrate from the office to what is effectively the cloud. What we're seeing with companies today that have those systems is that they're building out their own internal cloud infrastructure, what used to be called on-prem, and allowing their employees to remote into those systems. Now, you can't simply just put a tower in a rack, air conditioning, away you go. It's a bit more involved than that. Some companies are now getting to the point where because they're designing their kind of equivalent of an on-prem solution using systems like this, that even when employees do go into the office, they can simply just, again, remote into these systems. The way of working has changed. The benefit also of moving to a 2U equivalent system like this is that you can also crank up the power. What used to be 280 watts, when you put additional PBO in, say, a Threadripper system, you can push that up to 350, 400, 450 watts and get extra performance rather than having the workstation by your side just go all the damn time. With this, lifestyle, uh, quality of life is improved. You have better thermals, better performance, better manageability, better serviceability. But also when you're in that rack ecosystem, if you're in the environment where they can offload work during overnight onto other systems that are idle, if you have it in this form factor, if you have a level of manageability like this, then it simply works. I've been speaking with Armari, a system integrator who builds systems like this for medium-sized clients. They're actually sponsoring this video. What they're seeing when they sell to companies that want 20, 50, 100 systems, where they're moving from in the office to work from home, is that they need high power systems and they need solutions simply in racks like this, pre built with some minor customization for whatever they're using it for. They need them quick and they need them deployed. Using a local company like Armari here in London means that you have access very quickly to somebody very close in case something goes wrong. And Armari do additional things on the customization. For example, uh, this PCB here. Uh, down here, that's connecting NVMe and SATA drives. That's custom built. I mean, this system, in terms of specifications, 3995WRX, 64-core, high-end, uh, alpha-cool, liquid cooling, 
You can crank up the memory as much as you like. You've got space for a double or triple slot GPU or additional storage along with the uh, dual U.2s at the front. You've also got um, four M.2, one of those four Ultra M.2 adding cards. Uh, that actually comes with the WRX80 motherboard when you buy it normally. And then along with the, uh, the, the, the cooling here, you've got three massive fans coming in the front along with another one to help with the GPU. You've got these four Delta fans at the back just making sure that not only the VRM are cool, but the memory is cool and the CPU is cool and everything can be pushed to the limit. We did some testing on this system, and as you might expect, very much 3995 WX performance. Yeah, if you had a custom Threadripper system, the 3990X, you can extract more per core performance. Though the point here is that you have the memory channels and you have it in a very stable system. Amari even hook up the internal IPMI into a D-sub connector, which is just down here. Now that I've explained the second part of my initial question, let's move on to the first part, which is why are these systems in high demand? Now you may think that a lot of uh, workloads that have traditionally been run on CPUs, CPUs for which the Threadripper Pro might be good at, have moved all onto GPU workloads now. Now that's not the case. There are companies with well-established CPU workflows that rely on upgrades to CPU performance for their gen-on-gen -gen upgrades. Either their workload doesn't easily convert to a GPU or an accelerator, or they don't see the they they don't believe that there's benefits to transitioning their large code stacks over. Amari deals a lot with the video effects industry here in London. Now London has a very rich film history and also that video effects and the ability to just manipulate video with modeling with rend rendering there's a lot going on here and amari caters to some of those big production houses they've turned around and they've said that their editors instead of being in the office with their workstations by their desk now have to work from home how do they manage that infrastructure so they can still continue their work from home. And the result is two things. One is a system like this, which is a straightforward to you uh, with manageability, also upgradable to Threadripper Pro 5000 series when it finally gets launched. The other product Omari offers is a combination tower rack mountable with rails. It deals with the whole 19 inch um, you know, rack specification and they put additional cooling in that so that it's uh, quiet, but also works either on the desk or in the rack. That is the 4U equivalent, whereas this is a 2U and allows for more density. Now, if Amari, if a company like Amari wanted to go even denser, then you know you may be looking at a 1U or two blades per 2U or even two blades per 1U. That involves custom motherboards, custom design. You're looking at a much higher entry point for that cost. The video effects industry have actually taken very well to Threadripper and Threadripper Pro. They can't get enough. And what we're seeing today is that they're waiting hand on foot for systems like this. They want the most cores, the most memory, the most cache, and again, something like a 3090 in there for anything that's additional that can take advantage of a GPU. With the move to Threadripper Pro, now, I said in my Threadripper Pro video that people have been demanding Threadripper Pro for pretty much a year now, a Zen 3 version of Threadripper Pro, and it has been announced, but Lenovo's got the exclusive to Q3. So companies like Amari here are kind of sitting on their hands waiting for shipments to come in. But even the standard 64 cores, uh, the 3995 WX, is hard to get these days, and uh, companies have customers that want to buy. <laughs> that need the stock. So it's an interesting dynamic here. Most people write off Threadripper and Threadripper Pro. One, because they're the only high-end desktop player in town these days. And two, what exactly needs all those cores that wouldn't automatically buy an Epic? And the point here, these video effects studios, these companies that go into that region, that also um, you know, a mixture of oil and gas and pharma, they want the best performing models that you can buy 
Because for them, the difference between a $2,000 processor and a $4,000 processor on a system is negligible if it gets your work done you know, almost 2x faster. So they're willing to pay out for the high-core count parts. And no doubt if there was a Threadripper Pro version of Milan X, they would want that as well. When I speak to companies, not only these guys, there seems to be an insatiable demand for these high core count Threadripper and Threadripper Pro processors. AMD seems to be making money elsewhere, but the buyers are there if AMD wants them. If you've ever tried buying a 64 core Threadripper or Threadripper Pro, they're difficult to find. 32 cores, sure. 16 cores, sure. But these guys want the max. Now, I've been testing this system for pretty much two, three months at this point. And yeah, it's loud. I don't have a rack to put it in. That's probably on me. But it's been churning through any workloads that I've been putting at it. And I'm kind of envious. I don't have a 64 core equivalent in my own personal rendering workstation. But the last few videos on this channel have actually been rendered with this. And it works perfectly fine, as you might expect. The cooling here is overkill. The question is, can you find the chips to power it? So believe me when I say there are companies that really want to get their hands on the Zen 3 version of Threadripper Pro. They've got customers willing to go and it will sell out very quickly when these companies can get their hands on it. I'm hoping to get my hands on one, hopefully sooner than later. And if you stay tuned for that, you'll probably see a review. If you're interested in a system from Armari, they also do custom chassis designs and internal custom components. For example, here, the power board at the bottom that deals with the dual redundant power supplies. That's custom built by Armari. I've got a video on that. Might be up on the channel already, or maybe it's the next, uh, next video that's coming along. Speaking about exactly how they do their custom designs and some of what they've done over the years for various customers. Hope you watch that as well. If you like this content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We also have now a private Discord server and if you want access to that, become a Patreon member and it will instantly add you as long as your emails are linked. You can join the Patreon for as little as $1.50 a month and it all goes back into helping the channel. Thank you for your support.